Welcome. I was digging through my cupboard the other day, and I found this cello I made when I was about 12 years old. So I thought it would be interesting to make another instrument, and see what difference time has made to my skills. And seeing as though I made a classical instrument when I was younger, I figured I'd make a modern instrument now that I'm older. I decided on an electric guitar, and after a bit of research I found the Gibson Les Pauls, which looks interesting, so I decided to make that. The first thing I did was draw up two templates, one to full size, and a second one millimeter smaller, which I could use for the interior dimensions. I chose this approach so that I could have a hardboard interior for rigidity, and a plywood exterior for the looks. After fixing the interior template, I used a fret saw to cut the hardboard pattern out. Then I sanded it down to get a clean finish. As plywood tends to chip when cut, I left an overlap on the face, which I could file down to get a clean edge. For the edging, I cut a strip of plywood across the grain and stuck that onto masking tape. After wetting that to make it more flexible, I could wrap it around the base to form the shape. Once that had dried, I could sand it down. For the front face, I seamed two pieces of ply to get a mirror grain effect. For the neck of the guitar, I used a popsicle stick for more rigidity. Then I carved out the overlap where the neck attaches to the body. I sliced out a wedge from the rear of the neck and wet the wood before bending it. This minimizes the chance of it snapping. Then I could bulk up the neck before sanding it into shape. The back of the guitar has two inset panels. I used a hollow punch and carved out the recesses for them. The panels themselves I created from thin styrene sheeting. Once I was happy that they fitted nicely, I painted them black and glued them in with super glue. Moving over to the front, I sanded in the contour around the edges. Then it was time for painting. For my research, it looked like there were a lot of color variations, so I took the liberty of making my own. To get the gradient, I applied a wash of brown and then built up oranges and reds towards the edges, ending off with a black trim. And then, because I apparently hate myself, I decided to meticulously hand paint the tiny little border around the guitar. But thankfully, I then came to my senses and instead used strips of styrene for the neck. For the frets, I settled on using staples. They're a little bit thick, but worked out okay in the end. After cutting them to size, I arranged them from narrowest to widest to match the taper of the neck and then glued them on. When I buy books, sometimes I get these tags in the back. The great thing about them is that inside you find these really thin strips of metal which are great for miniature craft projects. From that metal strip I cut out the markers for the neck and glued them on. And of course, this happened. And that went into the void of little craft bits that will never be seen again. So, after making a new part, I could finish up the neck and attach it to the body. I mixed together PVA glue, sawdust that I collected while I was working, and black paint to create a filler which I used to close up the gap between the neck and the body of the guitar. Then I moved on to creating all the hardware. These were all made from styrene. When working with such small parts, I find it easiest to grip them with pliers to hold them steady while sanding. I attach the parts to double-sided tape to make it easier to paint them. And after all the parts were done, it was time to assemble.
I coated the wood in gloss Mod Podge to seal it and get a polished looking finish. For the guitar strings, I painted fishing line silver. It gave me something that looked decent enough to pass the strings. After the guitar was strung, I could trim off the excess and add the clip over the base of the strings. And for the final touch, I used silver paint on a sharpened toothpick to replicate the screws. And that was that.